I love night photography. Shooting at night gives you an opportunity to have a really new, fresh perspective on your own photography. When you're going out there at a time that's not naturally a time that we would make photos, like at night, we're able to capture incredible, incredible photography, which really, I believe, takes our work to the next level. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Behind the Picture, a show that explores the world of photography, of course. Today, we're talking about the amazing realm of night photography. Night photography allows us photographers to capture captivating and unique images in low light conditions. And it allows us to basically face a new set of challenges and the rewards that come from those challenges. I love, love, love shooting at night. And I've put together an incredible body of night photography to share with you today to inspire you and we'll also be getting into just understanding a little bit of the technical side of shooting at night so let's start with a section we call photo anatomy and photo anatomy is basically the breakdowns by the way if you're tuned in live thank you i appreciate everybody who is here watching at home in toronto city or america uk europe south america australia wherever you may be i love the unique perspective that this photographer is giving and I mean, if you're wondering just to define night photography, anytime that you're shooting under super, super low light conditions or when there's no light from the sun at all and all the lights that we're dealing with are ambient lights, it's night photography. Now, there's so many reasons to explore night photography and i mean just how you can make your work look different than other photographers is just just one reason the photography that i've chose to show you today you can see there's like a different ambiance and a different mood from night photography and it gives us really unique creative opportunities and i feel like there's like a solidarity at, to shooting at night we're usually out there alone and trying to find those inspirational locations those spots that move you that move us to making photographs it's also a great way to do a series like i've been creating photography at night for literally my whole career and it opens up a whole avenue of creative possibilities and the first thing that i really endeavored into was light painting and although i'm not showing any of my work yet i am going to show you some of my favorite projects that i've shot at night welcome vicky welcome julie welcome ray i'm glad you guys are here look at this porsche photography done with long exposure and light trails Look at the way that this photographer is using ambient night sky as well as these light trails in order to illuminate this car. Like it looks so unique, so professional, and it adds a sense of movement to a still photograph. 
using light trails, using light painting, using slow shutter speeds are all great ways to show movement in a still area. And also shooting at night, really, it really helps us overcome challenges. And the challenges that I'm speaking about, it's the challenge of mastering exposure, the challenge of shooting at a low ISO. And we're gonna get into how to approach night photography and how to fate like master these challenges we're also thinking about focus we're also thinking about composition and we're thinking about lighting and the thing that's amazing about shooting at night is how our eye sees we can very closely stylize that with our camera we can use our camera at night to see how our eye sees All right, it's a little bit of photo anatomy. As we look at these last images, I hope the starkness and the architectural bias to this particular story, his use of ambient light, his use of shapes are all inspiring. And of course, the long shutter speed. really like the shooter's work. All right, let's get into some essentials. We're going to talk a little bit about essential gear for night photography. Like, what do you need? What do you need for night photography? Well, the great thing about night photography is you can shoot photos at night with your existing camera, whether you have a digital SLR or a mirrorless camera or a cropped digital SLR, crop sensor or a crop mirror, mirrorless camera, you're fine. Obviously, a full frame mirrorless camera is gonna be the best performance under low light conditions, but you can shoot this type of photography with any camera. The next thing your camera has to have is the ability to go manual. You need to be able to have control over your, your, expo your exposure settings, including aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Also, having a selection of lenses, and I, I go out at night with my 50 millimeter, I've gone out at night with my 16 millimeter, which is ultra wide photography and the 16 millimeter versus the 50 it's like night and day as far as the look and feel of the photography using fast lenses with wide apertures like i do with my 50 millimeter that also really gives you an a, a way of showcasing and sharing your photography with a new perspective, I'm about to share with you some of my long exposure personal work. This is taking its sweet time to load these photos, but let's get into it. This is a little bit of my long exposure photography. I shot these photographs maybe last summer and I really, this is on my blog. I really am proud of this particular body of work because I shot it from such a place of inspiration. And it really, yeah, these photos are big. It's taken quite a while to load. Here we go. I, this is my favorite of all of the long exposure light painting work that I've done recently. I have light a light wand. And this light wand, it, it's an RGB white light, so it can be white or can be um, warm, cold, or any color in the spectrum. So this is how 
I developed this particular body of work is by using this light wand. So I like night photography because it forces me into new areas. It puts me outside of my comfort zone and it, it helps me imagine locations in a way that I haven't imagined them before. So that particular story I did with fast lenses and wide apertures, I also used this essential piece of equipment, which is a tripod. We need a high quality tripod. This tripod I've had for 25 years. This is a Manfrotto 055. When you buy an expensive tripod, these tripods have parts that are replaceable. I can go to any camera store and buy any of the tabs, the heads, the the um the pivot arms, like everything is replaceable. When you buy a less expensive or a cheaper um tripod from Amazon, those tripods break. And most people who buy a tripod that costs like $50 or $80 or whatever, they go through four, five, $80 tripods, and then they finally buy one like $500 tripod, and then you just have that tripod for life. So my suggestion, high quality tripod. And if you're doing night photography, a tripod is very, it's an essential piece of kit for stabilizing your long exposure photographs. Another thing that many photographers like to use is a remote shutter release. I don't have a remote shutter release and I don't use one, but what I do do when I'm on the tripod is I use my self timer. So I set my self timer for three seconds. I push my button. I let go of the camera. Three seconds pass. The camera takes the pictures and I deal with no camera shake. When you're doing longer exposures, in just the act of pushing the button, what's happening is you're causing a little bit of camera motion to happen right at the beginning. And if you're looking for tack sharp night images on a tripod, use your self timer. Or if you have a remote shutter release, you can also use your phone. Most cameras allow you to connect your phone so you can use your phone as a shutter release. And lastly, a flashlight is super helpful. And the reason not only are you able to see your camera controls because it's night, I use a headlamp sometimes so I can see inside my camera bag and such like that. You can also use a flashlight for light painting. So a, a flashlight is super, super helpful when you're doing night photos and I suggest having a flashlight in your bag. You can also use the flashlight to illuminate certain areas of your photograph where all black you can jump in, do a little painting and jump out. So a flashlight is the last part of the essentials. Just to go over the overview, over, 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 overview. <laughs> Camera, full frame mirrorless. Um, as long as it can go manual, you're good few lenses, normal lenses, um, telephoto lenses, if you must, that give you a wide aperture. My preference is a normal lens that gives me a super wide aperture or a wide angle lens that gives you a very unique perspective. Um, also, try out shooting with wider apertures and testing bokeh at night. I have some amazing stories to share with you that are actually doing just that. So let's get into mastery. We're going to talk about some of the technical things that you have to think about when it comes to shooting night photographs. Like many of you who've seen my YouTube trailer or my one minute like meet Steve Cardi video, I'm making these photographs of Rochester, AKA juice. And you can see, I'm using LED lights outside at night in order to get this amazing studio look um, at night. So the first thing that we start with with our camera is 
a low ISO setting. The first thing you think about when you go out to shoot at night is jack your ISO. Like go up to a thousand, go up to two thousand, four thousand, six thousand, like ten thousand. These cameras, my camera goes up to ISO one hundred and twenty-five thousand. So shooting at night, jack that ISO. That's the first thing you think of, but it's actually the opposite. What you're trying to do is lower your ISO and compensate for that low ISO 400, 200, or 100 with a longer shutter speed. And that's where the tripod comes in. So low ISO, ISO 100, 400, or you can split the difference and use 200. And the reason again is because of noise. What you'll notice with all of my night photography is that there's no noise. And the reason is because it's exposed properly. Once you nail your exposure with night photography, and I assure you the ISO that I shot these photographs at was likely ISO 400. So this is just showing you that you're able to get noise free photographs at night and you're also able to push the ISO way lower than you think. The next thing, aperture. You can really mess around with aperture. You don't need to shoot everything at f22 nor do you need to shoot everything at 1.8. It doesn't need to be wide open. It doesn't need to be all the way pin narrow unless you want that look and feel with your photographs. If you're shooting wide angle, wide angle has a tendency to make everything wide and also in focus. Wide angle shows less depth of field than a normal lens. So if you want a depth feeling or a feeling of isolation with your subject, my suggestion is using um, a normal lens. And you can see here, you see the trees in the background, you can see that depth of field effect happening behind him. All right, the next thing, use aperture to balance exposure rather than changing shutter speed. Use aperture to balance exposure rather than changing ISO until you get to that point where you actually need to change ISO and then make jumps in one stop steps, meaning go from 200 to 400. And if you're shooting at 1.8, that'll give you now 2.8 or 2.5. It'll give you like one stop more of exposure. And also use longer exposures to compensate for now your low ISO and your equivalent shutter speed. You, I mean, equivalent ISO and um, aperture, use longer exposures, like shoot at one second, two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, 15, 20, 30 seconds. These are all acceptable shutter speeds when it comes to shooting at night. Next, and the last thing, play with movement using your tripod at night. Play with things moving through the frame. Play with light moving through the frame. When you're using a slow shutter speed, when lights move through the frame, that gives you that sense of movement, that gives you those light trails. And if you've never done photography at night, as I said earlier, it's a great way to just jumpstart your creativity and Shooting at night is, I believe, an essential skill. You could get hired to shoot an event that happens at night. You could get hired to shoot, um, or your idea could just be to do a particular job at night to add a little bit of a different dynamic to your work. So the more you practice when there's no consequence, doing photographs at night, photographing the stars, photographing um, sunsets and then into the dark, bring lights outside, start to light your environment, play with colors. All of these things really help you and bring you into the realm of what I like to call mastery when it comes to your photography. And I'm going to show you just a few 
inspirational stories before we get into foundation. And look at how beautiful this is. And the fact that it's a GIF. And this purse, this photographer has a lighter and a darker version of this sign. So it's actually glowing. So it's a very clever portfolio item. Using reflections, shooting through windows. There's definitely an energy here. I'm going to show you one more project. When I was talking earlier about depth of field using a normal lens and really widening that aperture, look at this story. Incredible use of shallow depth of field. Incredible use of shallow depth of field. Do let me know in the comments what you think of this video. And by the way, if you like this type of content, likes help more than you know. If you haven't hit the like button yet while you're watching this video, please take a moment, hit the like button, and know that each time you hit the like button, each time you share this content, it goes out to more people. It puts my thumbnail in front of more people, and it just gives me the opportunity for more people who might find this content valuable to find it. Really love this bouquet idea. I really love this shallow, shallow depth of field. I think it's fantastic. All right, let's get into, let's get into some foundation. Should I show this one more story? Yeah, we have to, because this is just excellent. Excellent. But also, this shows you what happens when you start to push the ISO up to around 1000. You can see how the look and feel of this photography at ISO 1000 is very different than my photography at much lower ISOs like 400 and 200. But you can also see that that high ISO gives this work a little bit of a film look. This photograph is fantastic. It gives this work a little bit of a film photography look which is also like very pleasing to look at again do let me know about the photographers that i chose to share with you today in the comments again i will just zoom in and show you the grain one more time you can really see that grain in here when you use an how a higher iso okay let's get into let's get into foundation now there's some challenges when it comes to shooting at night. And one of the challenges that many photographers face is autofocus. Autofocus is enhanced, accelerated, sped up by light. So when you're shooting in low light conditions, autofocus becomes a factor that we all have to be very wary of. We have to know also that the thing that is the brightest is going to be the easiest to focus on, but that thing that's the brightest might not be compositionally in the center of your frame. So get used to focusing and recomposing. You can also use edges to focus on, like this edge here. The camera needs contrast in order to focus, so you can focus on 
that line here between the white window and the black bar. You can obviously focus on the restaurant sign, the awning. Where you're not trying to focus on is anything here on the ground. And because it's slick and there's, there's color variations, but there's not much contrast, it's going to be hard to bite. If you bite here and it does focus here, this building is going to be out of focus. So these are all things that we have to consider when it comes to what we're focusing on. I'm going to just share with you one more photo. And you can see also the beautiful mist that appears in this particular body of work, how that mist almost um, accentuates every light source, or this photographer is using a pro mist filter, which is also a possibility. Snack bar definitely got a lot of attention. The next thing that you can do in order to fix your autofocus is switch to manual mode, zoom in, and then nail your focus. You switch to manual focus on the camera, zoom in, make sure that your manual focus is perfect, zoom back out, and then take your photo. There should be no excuses when it comes to shooting at night. Any problem that you may have, you can work around. Also, the flashlight is another great way to catch focus. What you do is your subjects in front of you, the camera's going, er, 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 er. it's not biting. Grab that flashlight, turn that flashlight on, flash the flashlight at the place that you're trying to focus, focus your camera, put your flashlight down and take the photo. That's also a way that you can um, get your focus on the spot that you need without um, changing the light. It's just, uh, it's kind of smart to do it that way. Flashlight is multi-use when you're dealing with low light. This is the photographer that I chose for the thumbnail. I really liked this story. I thought that it was super dynamic. And the fact that this van has a photo booth in it, I really enjoy the fact that this photographer put LED lights inside the van, which adds like a depth of color. And you can see that that same light inside the van is an RGB white light. And here he has it set as white. This is an actual neon sign that's on top of this van because it is the photo bus and the dynamic of the body language, the legs. And yes, the nose of the van is cut. Yes, this girl is relatively center focus. Yes, this curtain in the back is a little distracting. But overall, the dynamic of the photograph, I find to be like, I think it's a cool a cool flick and a really cool story. The model's pretty interesting as far as her body dynamics, her poses and such. So um, I felt it really worthy and a, a good story to share with you in this particular section I like to call foundation. You can also utilize focus, focus peaking. You can use live view. There's so many different ways that you can shoot at night and get precise focusing spe spe specifically when you're shooting people or a specific subject. If you look at this focus, you can see this is actually really nailed like this. Um, although the file isn't huge, you can really see that this photographer really nailed the photography. And yes, this photographer is Lithuanian. Another great body language you can see also where the photographer is bringing in lights and it almost look like looks like these lights are car lights but there's also another above light that's coming that looks like it's some sort of a front porch light here so this could easily be done with a car over here and just the porch light over here 
and that placement, the right head angle, and this body language with her legs and her arms here just make this a really dynamic photograph. You can also see the leading line here is also making it super interesting. All right. Another thing that's really necessary when we're shooting these uh, nighttime photographs is shooting in raw. Like, there's this shouldn't even be a conversation. We need to be shooting raw always. We need to be shooting raw always. Anytime we're doing photography, whether you care about it or not, whether you know what to do with your photographs in post or not, we need to shoot raw. And you need to shoot raw because of the manipulations that you can do afterwards. If you shoot JPEG, the thing that's horrible about JPEGs is even opening a JPEG, making it a little smaller and saving it again is called JPEGing a JPEG. And a JPEG basically takes the entire data curve, cuts off this side, cuts off this side and compresses it. So each time you open a JPEG, it's it, like expanding a zip file, but it also cuts the data, cuts the data again when you save it. So working on JPEGs, every time you do something with a JPEG, you're destroying the file further and further and further and further. So you process from your raw file. From there, you process a TIFF, that TIFF, becomes your processed finished master and then you make baby jpegs or you call the tiff like mama and then you make baby jpegs from the tiff so you never lose quality on any of the jpegs you make jpegs are throwaways but you should be using tiffs as your master images so we're always, always, always shooting in a raw format. It obviously gives us all the data information. It reduces noise. Look at this story. How sick is this? And of course, it gives us all the highest quality, non-destructive editing possibilities after the fact. What a clever story, eh? And really great color. I really like this. And you can also use noise reduction techniques if necessary in post-production in Lightroom in order to recover some of your noisy images if you're shooting at a higher ISO. But there's no reason for you to be shooting at a higher ISO. We should also be using cool light sources. There's so many different ways that we can find amazing light sources with our nighttime photography. I find that night photography and the sources that we see when we're out there shooting at night, I don't think that we give enough credit to what existing light can do. Street lights, cityscapes, the moon, there's signage, there's neon, there's so many different nighttime existing ambient light sources that we can leverage. We have to just look for them. There's indoor light, like when we're outside looking inside and seeing what indoors looks like from a different perspective. These are all ways that we can use existing ambient light. So I hope you guys are ready for this week's assignment because I haven't given an assignment in a minute. Last weekend, I was doing an in real life stream, meaning I was out there with my camera walking around. I, if you haven't had a chance to see some of my IRL streams, definitely watch. I've been working on perfecting this setup for a very long time and I finally have what I believe is a really cool setup. So um, if you like that type of in real life photography or in real life um, live streams, that one's definitely a great one to watch. Before we get into this week's assignment, I would like to announce next week, Sunday, I am doing the first photo walk of the year. If you are a photographer and you are in the Toronto area, next week I invite you 
at 4 p.m. to meet myself and other photographers who I hope will choose to join for the first ever photo walk. We're going to be meeting at 4 p.m. at Trinity Bellwood's main gates, which is at Strawn and Queen. And we'll be meeting there. Bring your camera, bring your gear bag, bring your lenses. And I'm going to be taking you on an amazing two-hour tour of the area showing you cool locations showing you ways to use light we're going to be photographing each other and i'm going to be live streaming the whole thing so if you're not able to actually make it to toronto to meet us at trinity on sunday july the 9th then watch it watch the video because we will be making a live stream of it if you are coming make sure your cameras are charged make sure your bat your memory cards are cleared and you're ready to shoot because it's going to be a super 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 fun day so if you're watching this after the live but before july 9th and you're in toronto make sure you're at that photo walk it's going to be amazing it's gonna be amazing i have so many cool things planned and if the turnout is great if you guys enjoy these live photo walks i'm going to be doing them by surprise i'm going to be doing and the only way that you're going to find out is number one if you're subscribed to my youtube channel here and you watch my content number two maybe pay attention to my community page from time to time on my on my YouTube and lastly join my mailing list my mailing list is gold literally the best photographer's mailing list that you could possibly be on if you're a photographer and you're not on my mailing list go into the description of the video that you're watching right now and join my mailing list it's called a life behind the camera it's like something you've never seen before it's beautiful and um all of my previous newsletters are archived in a beautiful website you'll love it all right let's get into this week's assignment let's go i know you guys have been missing the assignments yes i know you have so because you've been missing the assignment so absolutely much because of that, I think it's time, you know, you didn't have an assignment last week. So let's give you an assignment this week. You probably might be able to imagine what the assignment is. My goal for you this week is to create three to five portfolio level photographs at night. Now, when I say portfolio level, I mean photographs that you're so impressed with, photographs that you wouldn't have shot if I didn't prompt you encourage you and um critique you afterwards i'm asking you to make three to five i usually ask for three but for this particular exercise the more you shoot at night the better you get expect more episodes on night photography and expect more requests from me of you to shoot photos at night shooting when the light conditions are poor, shooting when there is no light and you have to find areas of your town or your city that are bright enough that constitute a night photo. You might be Jason Warbucks watching this and you have an ongoing series of gas stations at night. It might be time for you to start back that series and get out there and shoot more gas stations at night because that's some night photography that I really got excited about. You guys know if you've made photographs at night, it's probably some of your favorite photography. It's probably been some of the hardest photography that you've done. If you're a portrait photographer, if you shoot fashion, my challenge for you is to take that portrait subject or take that fashion model outside at night like I just did with the video I shot recently and make some amazing content. Do something different. Put yourself 
outside your comfort zone and create three to five images that are going to blow not only me away, they're going to blow you away, and they're going to blow everybody away when I show them on this stream. If you'd like to submit your images, you have to join the Discord. I have the largest growing photography Discord community in the known internet, according to no stats and 100% only me. The Discord's a great place. My community, everybody here who's watching are all incredible people. They're the most helpful, generous people that you'll ever come across. Join the Discord. Find a photo community right here with the people who are also watching this show and see how your smile goes from this to this because you've now found your people. Join the Discord. And lastly, how you submit is in the Discord under a photo folder, you'll see a channel called AAPP Submissions. I don't do photo submissions or look at photo submissions on Sunday's episodes. I only look at photo submissions Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you'd like to have your photos reviewed, if you'd like to have these assignment photos reviewed, submit them to the AAPP submissions folder and watch an episode on Tuesday, watch an episode on Thursday and catch your photos being reviewed. If you like this kind of content, you have to subscribe. If you love photography like I do, like if you're fucking obsessed about photography like I am and like the people who watch this show are, you have to subscribe. That's how you get notified every time I upload new content, of course. And also, you know, subscribing notifies you when I go live. So subscribing notifies you when I post something to my community board. So subscribing is also a really great metric for me. It really helps me know how I'm doing. So subscribe if you're a fan of what I'm doing right here on the Steve Cardi channel. Guys, that is the end of today's episode. That is the end of all the housekeeping. If you guys enjoyed it. Oh shit. You call yourself a photographer. Look how you're dressed. Yes, you. You just wear track pants, t-shirt. If you're gonna wear track pants and a t-shirt, at least look fly like me. Here, take this. Right? How fly do you look now? If you guys wanna get the flyest apparel for creatives and photographers, you gotta tune into that merch store. There it is. Look at, I have over a hundred items spread between two merch stores, limited edition drops, every video that you watch on YouTube, as well as on all my channel pages. You'll see the links for my merch store. Make sure that you guys jump in there and look fly like I do when you're shooting. Let's get it on. Guys, I've dropped a whole bunch of new merch on my merch store. You might want to cop it. There's a bunch of summer stuff. I haven't done my summer merch promo yet, which highlights all the t-shirts, caps, trucker caps. If you're a photographer, by the way, that um, shoots wildlife, I have some a sick, sick hat that is orange and and brown so it's orange to make sure that you don't get shot and it's, it says photo across the top so people know that you're a photographer and not a hunter got a little camel in the back so you're um not gonna get uh gored because they won't see you guys i hope you liked today's episode i'll be back again tuesday for another one i hope you guys will be with me those tuesday episodes start at six o'clock what we're going to be doing Tuesday and Thursday, we have no idea, but I promise you it will be a dope episode just like today. There's going to be another episode that's going to want to play right after this one. So make sure you watch and I will see you guys on Tuesday. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks everybody who tuned in today live. Thanks everybody who made it to the end of this video watching after the fact. Remember, when it comes to photography, whether you're shooting day or night, the hardest thing to do always is show up. 
you get better every single time you look through that camera. Make sure that you guys keep shooting. You guys are a part of 